It's day three of Defemoramba, your daily ephemera inspiration in December. In this daily series, we want to show you ideas for handmade ephemera for your junk journals. This December daily series is a collaboration with my dear friend Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. That means you get two videos per day to watch to get some inspiration for your own ephemera. My name is Luisa Heinzel and I want to welcome you to this episode in which I want to try something that I have never done before and I would like to try a little experiment by making a penny rolling card today. So let's try something new for our junk journal today. The prompt for today is bright color and journaling card, as you can read here on our Defemoramba prompt list. You can find this list as a free download linked down below this video, so please feel free to download it and print it at home so that you have it at hand for your own ephemera creations during Defemoramba. But that's not all. As you can see, I have my third paper bag here where I will, will find the animal that we have to use today and also one of our international snacks. So let's see what we have here for today. So this already looks really yummy. <laughs> this is the international snack. If you want to know more about those snacks and why Barbara and I have those snacks in our videos, then please watch the video of December the 1st, there I'm explaining this a little bit more in detail. This snack comes from Turkey and I'm really, really, really nervous how that will taste. The animal for today is the penguin and that's for me a really cool thing. By the way, those animal cards you can also find as a free download linked below this video so that you can print them out and use them as well for your own creations at home. This penguin is not, a, you know, a random penguin. It's a very special penguin that I have put to this card for those uh, freebie cards. Um, this penguin originally came from one of my printables from my Etsy shop. That is a whole, yeah, let's say bundle of uh, digital papers that can be combined with each other. And there's actually a really funny story behind that because <laughs> I made a mistake with this printable. So this originally was called Penguin Lover's Notebook. But as you can see here on the right side, that are no penguins. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I've accidentally put some other black and white birdies into this printable <clears throat> and I thought that that were those vintage penguins. Do you know what I mean? I was in such a flow with creating this digital that I haven't realized that that are not penguins. Uh, I mean, not all of them are penguins. And <clears throat> some of you <laughs> have uh, said to me that that is wrong. And so I've corrected the title of this <laughs> printable and I've renamed it into Penguin and Friends. So you can find this paper collection and some matching paper collections in my Etsy shop. And I want to use some of this paper today because here we have the penguin and we have bright color. That's perfect. We can just make a journaling card out of this. Do you like the Penguin and Friends digital paper collection? And do you perhaps also like the matching papers from my Etsy shop? Then I have a little goodie for you. You can get the Penguin and Friends paper collection and also all of the matching paper collections with 50% off now by just using this code here at the end of your order. So please, if you want to have that with 50% off, just put this code here into the little box at the end of your order and you will get 50% discount on all of those items. Enjoy! First, I would like to trim this down a little bit. As you can see, this is the half of one of my printable pages. The other half of the page I've used for my German video. 
so I'm just eyeballing this and I'm just cutting that down to the size that I like like this penguins are very special animals aren't they when a penguin has found a partner then he stays with this partner for the rest of his life for me that is very fascinating and that is just it's just heartwarming so i thought what if those penguins here are looking for their love of their life and perhaps this penguin here has already found the love of his life but he has some problems with his eyes penguins are black and white aren't they and perhaps this one here had a little problem with his eyes and he accidentally <laughs> has fallen in love with this black and white girl here instead of another penguin <laughs> i thought this is funny <laughs> So I've decided that I want to put this girl here to my journaling card instead of a second penguin and that these both are in love. This girl here comes from my Vintage People Fuzzy Cut Images Volume 2. I will link this item down below for you in the description box so that you can, uh, if you want, check that out and get this for your own collection. And what I really like is when those images come um, out of the frame of the card a little bit, when they peek out from the card. But now I'm just thinking if the card now is uh, then a little bit too wide. So let me just check that. We want to put that here. Yes, we have to cut a little bit more here so that it is not so wide. But I guess now this should work. Yes, that that works very well. Okay, so um, the plan is to put this girl here so that it peeks out a little, a little bit from this card. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit excited. So um, we are going to use some Mod Podge to glue that down because Mod Podge... Um, is really good for gluing and sealing at the same time and uh, I'm gluing that down and at the same time I'm cutting um, a second piece just out of uh, regular cutstock or something like that a little bit thicker paper uh, to be able to put this piece of paper on top of the other one so that it gets a little bit more sturdy so I've just backed this whole piece with a piece of scrapbooking paper so that it gets a little bit more sturdy. And then I've just inked the edges with some Distress Oxide ink walnut stain. And I'm smearing that around with my fingers a little bit because I don't want to have that too intensive. The prompt for today says bright color. Um, so I don't want to have it too vintage and not so extremely distressed but what I really like for yeah, some alternative way to distress something is when you use a nail file and then just go over the edges of your piece like this you could also use some really fine sandpaper and just go over this a little bit, just here and there, not everywhere. And that's a great way, I think, if you want to make something different and um, if you are perhaps searching for a different way to distress your pieces and especially if you don't want to have it too extreme. Can you see this light white area here? Here the paper comes through, I mean the, the inner part of the paper. And that looks, I think, really interesting. Next, I want to take a piece of, yeah, you can see <laughs> this is some heavier material as well. So that I would like to use for the base for my penny rolling card. And this is just a tiny little bit bigger than this top layer here so if 
I've cut it uh, approximately one or one and a half millimeter bigger than the actual cut on top is. And because we have very much black in this image here, I would like to take a black pen and just go around whoo, a little bit here so that the edges of this base get black so that you can see a tiny little frame around the whole card later. Of course, you could also use a black uh, cardstock or something like that, but I like to use those trash materials like this junk packaging from, for example, this one is from Amazon. Um, I think this, the thickness of this material is very great for such a project. I'm also going ooh, over these edges here with my pen to make sure that these are black as well. Otherwise, that would look strange in my eyes. So let's just check if that black is enough. Yeah, I guess. This looks really beautiful, I think, with this black frame. And now I have to cut out a circle around the head of the penguin. And for that, I can't really give you measurements or something like that. I've made myself a little template just out of some scrap paper. <clears throat> so I've used a die cut in this size and as you can see this is a relatively good size because you can see the penguin really clearly. You don't come with the edge here to the face of the girl because we only want to have the head of the penguin in within this circle here. Then I have taken a second die cut and I have placed that um, into this one here so that I get this and this. And we are going to need these both pieces later of course the base here as well but what I'm trying to say is in some of the card making tutorials they throw away this piece and they only use the circle. I will explain in a second why I will use both pieces here um, for this project. So I'm just taking my die cut machine then I'm taking the bigger of my both die cut circles and I'm placing that here where I want it so that the penguin head is centered like this. Then I'm taking the other one and I'm putting this here. I'm using some washi tape to um, glue that down, run it through the mas machine um, and the washi tape makes uh, sure that nothing can move. So then we can take that out and we have these three pieces now and perhaps you have seen a professional card making tutorial about those penny rolling cards on YouTube then you probably have seen that they take this piece put it to the base and then they take the round piece and they put it in here and because they've used a different color for the layer underneath, this color uh, comes through in this slot here. That means here's just a solid color in between of this circle and this thing. But that, in my case, looks a little bit strange because now it looks like the head of the penguin has fallen off. <laughs> so I want to use this circle here and bring that back in here into the correct position so that it lines up with the rest of the image here. And of course I have to glue this to this thing here so uh, that the whole thing can work. So that will make sense in a second. So we are going to take this piece and we are lining that up with this little frame so that the distance around this thing is everywhere the same around the whole card. And then I'm taking a pen, so, <laughs> and I'm just um, 
making this little thing here so that I can see where this thing has to go and especially that I can see where I have to color this in because I want to make this black as well because later on the layers will have a little distance to each other and I don't want to see this brownish packaging paper from Amazon through those little slots that will be there in the end. Why is this pen not working? I mean, what the heck. So make sure that everything here in the middle is black or whatever color you want it. It makes sense to me to have the same color here like you have for this frame. Double check, that works. So now I'm taking this piece here and I'm taking just some bookbinders glue. Preparing this here by just adding a little bit of glue here. And then I'm going to take my tweezers ready to go. And I'm holding this thing here in place where it will go later. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Pressing this down. Take this little guy. Line that up with the image of the top layer. Like this. Press that into this little circle hole there. Just like a puzzle. Press it down really well so that it stays exactly in this position. And then you can take this off and you have this in the position where it has to be later. So we can let this dry. And for this mechanism of the card, we are going to need something in between of this layer and this layer that is a little bit thicker. And it has to be exactly as thick as your coins are that you want to use for the mechanism. So you, go, you are going to need two tiny coins or something similar. So this is just um, one cent. I mean, two pieces uh, of one cent. So you need two things that are relatively heavy. So metal would be good. That's, I guess, the reason why the most people are using coins for this kind of project. You could also use some other metal pieces that you have. They have to be the same size and... Um, the thing that we now want to use to bring in between of these both layers have to be a little bit thicker than your coin is. So that means I'm looking here at my one cent coin and I'm checking how thick this is by eyeballing that, of course. And I'm gluing some pieces of my packaging paper on top of each other so that I reach a thickness that is a little bit more than this coin is. Of course, this uh, method is a little bit more time consuming to glue all of these pieces on top of each other and have them here now. Um, but I like to use those junk materials. Of course, you could also take some of those sticky dots. I think um, from Stampin' Up, they are called dimensionals. I think they are called a little bit differently with each brand they are coming from. But from this here, you would need very, very much. So I like to use this material from the packaging because this is free. But you want to make sure that you have something here that is thicker than the coin that you are using. So just take your coin, place it next to the thing that you've used to make the distance and then feel over that with your finger and you can feel that this is higher than the coin even if you can't see it in the camera. And you want to make sure that you have those pieces here um, all over the back of this card thing but please have some things in mind. So the first thing is don't go with this thing too close to the edge of this thing below because otherwise you would see that later when you look 
from this side to the card. You don't want to have this peeking out uh, from the card. So make sure that you have a few millimeters um, distance to the edges. And, and that's the more important thing I would say, you need a distance to this circle. So please don't take those pieces and glue them directly like this, for example, to the edge of the circle. Then the whole mechanism would not work later. later. So leave a little distance and then glue that down. You can also check that by taking the middle circle that will later on go here and then place that directly in the middle so that this is parallel. Take the coin and place that here like this so you, that you can see that here is enough space <clears throat> in between of this thing and the coin so that that can later on move along here uh, in the in this little slot that we are going to create here so i will glue down the rest of these distance pieces here so now when we have that we can take this whole thing and we can put glue to the back but we are putting the glue only to this packaging material here and not to this uh, other layer here so that we can make sure that we can glue it down only uh, with the distance pieces I don't know how to say that in English you know we don't want to glue down the scrapbooking paper, but we want to glue it here with this packaging paper to the base. And now it's really helpful. Sorry if my voice is now really loud, because I have to stand up to see that this is really centered, especially here where this circle is. I don't want to have that wonky. This is, I guess, the point where we can take some clamps to fix this here to let it dry completely and really good so that nothing can move anymore and I guess this is the right moment to taste our snack from Turkey to be honest I'm already asking myself what will I do when Diffamaramba is over and I don't have any snacks here in my craft room while a project is drying. I mean, Barbara, can you please <laughs> think about that and run to the shops where you've bought all of these snacks and and put together another box for me? I mean, perhaps for, for 2023, so that it's enough for every drying time I have here on my desk. <laughs> This is so much fun to unbox these and to taste them and, and to explore what's in here. So let's um, taste this snack here from Turkey. This is called Benimo. Benimo. Here's this little thingy. I don't know. It says chocolate coated marshmallow and coconut biscuit. I'm really excited how this will taste. So let's open this up. Ooh, they are really big. Okay, so let's taste one. Really interesting look. When I look at this, I think it would be totally worth it to try to create a textured journaling card background or something like that in this style. So I definitely have to take a photo or a screenshot or something like that of this. So let's try it. <laughs> that looks so interesting. <laughs> I think I really don't have an opinion about this. Mm. It's a little bit dusty, I would say. The cream is really creamy, so perhaps I should show you the inside. 
the cream is really creamy. I can't tell that it is like marshmallow or something like that, like the package said. Mm. Mm. Okay, if you try it separately, then it's like marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The biscuit itself is relatively dry, but it's delicious. It's really de delicious. It's not so sweet. That's good. Perhaps that means it has not too much sugar in it. <laughs> you can dream about that. I would say it's a 7 out of 10. So I think with coffee, this is way more delicious than it is without coffee. <laughs> I mean, it's delicious at all. But uh, I've just made a coffee for myself. Um, now I have to take these out um, to be able to put the package into my candy journal. How to manage that. So I think I will just staple that again. I think that makes the most sense. I will staple it on the top and the bottom so that I'm perhaps later on able to put something behind this package. So this is then like a little belly band or something like that. Here we go. I'm really curious how this whole journal will look when it's totally filled up with all of the packages of the snacks. This is already such a treasure for me. I'm really, I'm really happy to have that. When this is completely dry, we can remove the clamps and we can take this little piece here that goes into the middle here now. And I've just glued the same amount of little pieces of the packaging here so that we have this little distance here as well. So this has to be exactly the same thickness like those things that we have put in between of these both layers. And now we can take our both coins and we can just take one, put that in here like this, and then I'm using such little things here, those sticky dots, to um, glue those both coins on top of each other. So um, for this, I think it's good to have these sticky dots because uh, this area is actually really small. So this has to go to the middle of the coin, like this. And now it's really helpful when you have it in there like this to take the card and turn it around a little bit so that you can see it from this angle here to see of you uh, if you need um, a second of these sticky dots or if one is enough. I have made another card for the German video and I've experienced there that this thing uh, didn't rotate so well so for this video I would like to try a second of these dots. Um, as I said in the beginning I have never made such a card before so I'm trying to find the problem that I had with the other card and I guess that it was because the distance was not big enough. So let's take a second of these here, put that in the middle, that's a little bit wonky, hopefully that doesn't matter. And then I'm taking the second coin and place it directly on top of this so that it is centered and that we have this little distance here now. And now we can take this, put that back in here. So the coin on the bottom is below this layer here and the coin on top goes on top of this layer here. That means that this layer is in between of the both coins. And now we are taking this. We are going to put some glue on the back. Just like this. And now I'm trying to line up this thing here with the image. 
when we have that we can test if this works and if this is going to move that seems to work and it's the same problem like with the card in the other video is it's just going around like this and then here it stops and I don't know why ah that drives me it drives me crazy absolutely drives me crazy if anyone has a tip why that is happening please leave a comment I have absolutely no idea but I like this idea of having something where you can uh, just play around a little bit and even if you have to rotate that with your fingers it's for me it's really nice to have something like this that in my journal so yeah let's see um, let's now decorate the coin because this is a little bit weird isn't it so I would like to use a little cluster this uh, is just made out of some paper scraps and a button that is sewn on here as you can see and I want to have that somewhere here but I think we have to cut this down otherwise that drives me nuts and this is perhaps also still a little bit big so I will just tear that down a little bit and I want to have this like you know those um, thoughts that you have when you are in love with someone that are rotating around your head or in your brain or in your heart goes everything you know <laughs> relatively wild I'm just thinking we could put some black splatters to this little cluster to have the connection color wise to the penguin just like this and I also want to add another color to my cluster and I'm just looking here through the stash of papers that Barbara has sent to me to use for the defamoramba uh, series and since the prompt list said bright color I mean we have this blue that is relatively bright isn't it <laughs> we have the blue but uh, I'm just thinking if we um, should add another pop of color let's see perhaps perhaps this there's a that is a great contrast um, so I'm just cutting out a little piece here folding that in half and then I'm just cutting a little heart out of this and that's a revolution for myself because normally I don't like this heart shapes perhaps you know my channel and you know me <laughs> then you know that I normally wouldn't use hearts in my projects um, I mean I love the laugh <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> but I have problems with the shape of an heart I, don't, I really don't know why but uh, it's a weird shape for me so um, put a little cross into your calendar I don't know if you if um, this this saying is existing in English but in uh, in German we would say something like uh, put a cross to your calendar to the date of today when someone has made something that is unusual for him or her so this would be definitely something <laughs> to to do that and to put a cross to the calendar so um, <laughs> to glue this cluster to the coin I'm using some double-sided tape <coughs> to make sure that it stays there really well so now it looks like this and I think to make this um, a little bit more interesting we could add some more white flowers or something like that because we have really much white in this cluster and also in the dress of the girl and here in in the penguins um, so why not trying to add some flowers like these that looks not so bad I think but 
perhaps we can try something different today. What about putting this here? I mean, why not letting the flower grow from the top to the bottom? I think that's something that we um, don't see so often. So why not doing that like, like that? And perhaps we can put the second one here. I think that's a really nice arrangement. And I also want to add a quote. And I have chosen this one here from my stash that says you are loved and perhaps you are new to die cuts. These are the wildflower stamps by Tim Holtz and Zizix. I will link these down below for you as well. These are really my, my favorite flower dies. I would say these are so versatile. So I will link them down below for you if you want to check them out. And I think we can add some tiny black splatters to the flowers as well so that they look not totally white. And I think those splatters also bring them to life really, really well. I really like that. And since we have this little heart in this special color here, in the middle of the card, or yeah, depending on where this little rolling element is, uh, but it's relatively in the middle of the card, um, I thought we could perhaps add something in the same color, meaning with the same paper here from Barbara. So I um, have this little punch here that makes this little banner. And I thought, why not cutting out two of these? I mean, Defemoramba is a collaboration with Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. And that means we have to always um, be aware of the rule of three. And I guess if she had such a heart here in the middle of the card, she would use probably um, two more elements in the same color to get this feeling of three elements and, and you know, this magical irregular triangle that she's always teaching us to put to our projects so that they look harmonious. And in the most cases, 99%, 99.9%, I would say she's right uh, with this um, thing and with this little trick. So I'm trying to get a irregular triangle out of these little banners in the heart. Okay, so <laughs> this is my card for today. Um, this doesn't work completely like I've planned it. It works way better than the one in the German video, I have to say. So here something went better, obviously, than in the other video. But um, I'm happy with this card. And what I'm trying to say is try out things that you perhaps have seen somewhere. Perhaps that's not so typically for a junk journal or that's not perhaps it's, it's not junk journal related at all. But perhaps you think, oh, that's a cool idea, then please try that out and try to include that into your junk journal, even if it's something completely different, because you can learn from that. I mean, I have learned a lot from this, and I definitely want to know why this isn't going around here so easily, like I've seen it in several videos. Uh, I want to improve my skills about making such a card. And that's something mm, I think with those projects, we can grow really, really much. And we can learn so much from each other, of course, and from ourselves as well. We can learn to be patient. We can learn to um, try out different things, perhaps making this in a little bit different way or again, watching a tutorial on YouTube and trying to figure out why this isn't working. And that's what what our brain i guess needs next to being creative do you know what i mean 
those um, kind of technical things for me are um, as important as the creative part of making a journal is. I don't know if that makes sense. But uh, I want to put this card into my journal, of course, now. Um, I have made this card for... Ooh, you can't see it, sorry. Um, I have made this card here for the German video. And I have attached this here with a paper clip to the back of the journal because the card is relatively thick. So I've decided that I want to put the other card here to the front of the journal. So somewhere here. And I thought perhaps we can uh, put a paper clip here to this pocket, but that's, I guess, not possible. Or do I have such a big paper clip that this could work? Ooh, we have a blue paper clip. <laughs> Is that too blue? Oh, no, that would work. So let's see if that can work. If we put this here and then just bring that here to the pocket but i think it's too short yeah it's too short ah. hmm. is this a belly band no barbara why is this not a belly band <laughs> okay so i have to choose another page i thought it would be good to have it in the front of the journal because this is so thick and then it makes one of my pages really thick but um, yeah, so I will live with that and just, I will just put it here. But of course I um, want to be able to journal on the back. So I will adjust, uh, I can just put some white gesso here and then write on the back or even use it as it is to write on the back side. So, I mean, this is supposed to be a journaling card. Yeah, so I can't glue it down completely. So I'm just taking my paper clip here and I'm just attaching it to the page here. Like this. So then it can hang here and I can take out take it out whenever I want and journal on the back and then I can put it back with the help of the paper clip. So I hope you like this idea and I hope you like my little yeah, let's say intention behind this video. Try out different things that you've never done before and try out perhaps exactly this and let me know what experiences you've made with this technique. Please let me know if this works better than here on my card, on your card. Perhaps you have a trick that uh, can help me for my next card like this. Then please let me know that in the comments and please don't forget to check out Barbara's video. It's already online. The link to her channel is down below in the description box. So um, if you get a little bit crazy by this rotating thingy here, then you can check out her video to get another idea on today's prompt. I'm really excited what she has done with this prompt for today. And I'm excited what you will create. So if you want to share your creations on social media then please use the hashtag defamoramba it's also written down below in the description box and by the way you can also of course use that for your youtube videos if you want to make a youtube video if you perhaps have an own channel then of course you can also use the hashtag defamoramba for your videos so that they can be found with the hashtag in the YouTube search bar very easily. The hashtag is down below in the description box so that you can copy and paste that so that it's easier for you. And I hope we will see tomorrow with our next prompt. Stay creative. See you tomorrow.